Hey guys, Desslinter Magic here, and uh, I'm pretty pissed off about this story that just happened at Star City Games uh, to Thomas Meyer. So, um, I'm probably gonna get some heat over this video, but when does that ever stop me? Uh, I, I really like, you know, ruffling f some feathers in order to get the truth out there. Little disclaimer, okay, everything I'm about to say about Star City Games I heard secondhand. So, I mean, you know, I'm stating things that may be seen as facts, but like, it it's just, hey, I heard this, I'm just reporting it. That said... Two people that I've known in real life for about 10 years who have literally, I've known them before I started playing magic have told me that they had an experience like this. They were treated by the judges in a certain way and they saw others being treated that way. And they heard rumors from other people that they were treated that way. And then I asked about other people online. I said, has anybody had an experience like this? And oh my gosh, did my Twitter DMS and messages and comments blow up. So it would seem from literally like 15 to 30 people that the consensus is that Star City Games judges are just the most racist, sexist, um, orientationist. Is that, is that what it is? I'm sure it's whatever you get it. If you call over a judge at a Star City Games tournament in all likelihood, the color of your skin, your gender and your orientation, that is the primary factor of, of how the judge ruling will go. Those judges are allegedly there to just force their social policy about, oh, I hate white men, I hate straight guys, oh, there's too many white males in society and in this game, and I'm the great equalizer. That That's basically, I mean, you guys know you've heard that bullshit on, on Twitter, well, here they are in person. And I mean, there's some other things I've heard about the judges, like, like certain things about them and how they all kind of know each other and how they're all kind of one type of person, if you know what I mean, but I can't really say it on YouTube. But yeah, needless to say, they are all pretty much angry social justice warriors who hate men, hate white people, and have been drinking the Kool-Aid about, oh, this this group is, is what's wrong with society, and I need to get back at them. It's time for revenge and reparations. So keep that wonderful reputation of Star City Games judges in mind while we read what Thomas Meyer's statement about what happened is. And this is going to make your blood boil. Spoiler alert, he got disqualified for literally doing nothing. In fact, let me rephrase this. He got disqualified because his opponent was female and he's not. So Mr. Thomas Meyer, uh, in a link on Twitter to a Twit Longer page, says, To say I was caught in the wrong place at the wrong time in the sixth round of the SCG Standard Classic at Richmond would be one way to put it, but to say that I received unfair treatment is probably a more agreeable by the many. I, I would correct the grammar, but I just don't have time. <laughs> Even my opponent that I was sitting across from when this egregious ruling occurred. So even his opponent agrees, like, what the hell just happened here? So I was very caught off guard and flabbergasted while my opponent conceded before time even began in the sixth round. We both greeted each other warmly, and I, in fact, uh, got to make a joke about how both of our names started with a T. It was a very good introduction to my mind, and I was happy to have met a new competitor to enjoy the game with. So say hi, small talk, sit down, play magic, right? Nothing weird. When we both began to set up, I asked the person if they wanted to do a high roll in order to secure who would go first in the match. They agreed a high roll was sufficient. I grabbed two D6 out of my dice container excitedly and to effect hurriedly, that sure he means by that, and shook them onto the table in front of us. Six and three, a pretty good roll, but not unbeatable. My opponent turned her head at me and said she would appreciate if I rolled again. So see, that's where the details are a little bit scarce here. I, I don't know if she didn't see it, or she thought he just, like, rolled too low, or, you know, whatever. But honestly, it doesn't seem like she was trying to just angle shoot everybody and cheat her way to the top. I think she, like, legitimately thought there was something wrong with the roll, potentially. But I guess even he agrees maybe he got the dice out a little too quick and was a little too, uh, you know, quick on rolling them, I guess. So she just asked him to roll again, and he says, I have never encountered this situation, so I figured the fair thing to do is simply call a judge. That is absolutely correct. I'd be like, uh, for some reason this person wants me to roll again. Like, I literally don't know if they're accusing me of cheating, or if they don't like that I rolled a nine. Like, it could be anything in between. He's just like, I've, I've literally never had this happen before. So, kind of weird, unfortunate situation all around. Um, so the floor judge suggested I roll again seemingly just to be agreeable. Now, see, that I, I don't agree with. Every time somebody rolls above a seven, you could just, oh, Judge, I think they did something weird. They rolled weird. And then, well, there's no camera. There's no witnesses. Are they going to let you rig a roll? Are they going to let you roll again? Well, if you let the complainer do it, they just angle shot you and cheated. They, they just gave you a second shot at a lower number. If the judge goes with the person who's basically being accused of cheating the die roll, 
Well, then that person gets an advantage. And I don't think it would be appropriate to give them both a warning. So uh, th this is part of the problem with Magic the Gathering competitive play. There's so much angle shooting and throwing people off and cheating and accusations of cheating and fake cheating. It's just, it, as soon as money's on the line and prizes are on the line, it just turns into one giant shit show, to be honest. This, among many other reasons, is why you should avoid competitive magic like the plague. Especially if you're a white male at a Star City Games tournament and your opponent isn't. You are basically f like, in the judges' eyes, if, if they're the, the traditional typical SGWs that literally everybody has been telling me that they are, you in 2020 are personally responsible for racism if your skin even vaguely looks white. I mean, my Irish ancestors got here in, like, 1890, but I'm responsible for um, discrimination. I'm a quarter Irish, but still. Literally, the Irish were just discriminated against, not because of their beliefs or their skin color, but because they were barely functional alcoholics. Like, it was literally just based on actual verifiable actions and them actually being terrible people. But still, my people were oppressed, damn it. I'm a victim, too, for shit that happened 150 years ago. Let's all hold hands and be victims together, Star City Games judges. Anyway, so he goes on to say, I find it highly unfair that due to the discomfort of my opponent, I lose my high roll. Uh, by the way, my opponent's account of the matter can be found here, uh, where in their words, they say, and I quote, and truth be told, I don't think he is cheating. I don't, or I doubt there's anything fishy going on. I am sure they were well in, or a well-intentioned person and they just rolled the dice a little too close to the table on pure accident. Oh, that's what they took issue with. I'll come back and read their full statement, but um, I guess, yeah, the, the position of the role and, the, and I guess the fact that the person wasn't watching or something or didn't like the height of the role, and who knows. You know how hard it is to land the dice like that? I think they're being a little paranoid. And, uh, you know, <laughs> don't mean to spoil the ending, but it sounds like this person honestly has some issues. So he says, uh, but when the head judge comes over, there is actually no talk of my role. So remember, he called over, I think, a judge, but then the head judge came over. Uh, there is no talk about anything regarding the game or if an opponent or judge can even ask you to reroll, which, yeah, I assume they can. Uh, I understand my opponent had become emotionally distressed, but I was still not fully understanding what had happened. That's true. I, I guess she had never understood why she wanted him to roll again. Uh, so as far as he knows at the point, she's cheating. Uh, I really wanted to play the match at length because I truly do enjoy the competitive nature of the matchup I was about to face. But shortly after my opponent walked away, I was informed that they forfeited and that the head judge needed to talk to me some more off to the side. The judge sat me down and began to drill me about multiple things. The judge made sure to get as much info from me as possible and show him how I roll, as well as a few more questions about my opponent and my personal background. Now, I don't know after the Star City Games stopped hosting, like, official GPs. I think they're still considered, like, official events. And the judges are still certified judges, I guess. But I don't know if they can look up the, the Master Notes database of a player and see if they have done sketchy things in the past to make uh, a pattern. Like, if they get a warning, that's, as far as I know, put into a list somewhere. And then if they got a warning two or three times in the last, like, two or three years about the same thing and now they're accused of doing it, guess what? They did it. But if they can't, yeah, it sounds like the, the judges started asking about his personal background. Like, what? I don't even know what that means, and it sounds stupid and offensive and completely unnecessary. So uh, he says, I was absolutely outraged that I was disqualified for attempting to gain an advantage by rolling dice by Mr. Philip Monlevetti. Mon uh, that's who he's saying was the uh, judge. And by the way, that is the publicly listed in a database and on their website name of the head judge so i'm not like you know giving away info or anything so he says i held it in the best i could and tried to explain that this had to be some kind of mistake but philip Mondla, whatever was just not having it he claimed to have probed my former opponents for evidence in this matter but to my knowledge he asked three of them at absolute max he even admitted he could not locate all of them don't they know what table they're sitting at that's pretty bad uh so this evidence is admittedly by the head judge himself purely anecdotal it is a story and opinion given given by my former former opponents again not exactly empirical evidence against my rolling techniques so I, I, that really makes me wonder what his, the three people that he played with before said if, if i mean it depends what kind of question he asked did he kind of roll low to the table and close to himself they'd be like yeah why like what what about it oh yeah, yeah he's guilty i mean or, or did he ask did anything weird go on do you think he did anything to the die roll they'd be like no 
When I asked him why this little amount of non-empirical evidence was deemed worthy of my disqualification, he stated that he believed the integrity of the event was compromised due to the evidence he found. I truly believe that I was actually victimized here. Yes, you were, and it's because you're a white male. I don't know if you knew that or not. There's going to be hundreds of people reminding you how the Star City Games judges do things. If you were a woman, a gay man, a trans person, or anything but white they would have disqualified your opponent for accusing you of cheating and framing you. Like, how dare you accuse a female magic player of rolling the dice in an advantageous way? Screw you, you're disqualified. It literally would have gone that way from what I heard about how unbelievably bad these activist douchebags are. So he goes on to say, I just want to go on record and state that this head judge, someone we are supposed to be trusting with these events and trusting to maintain and uphold the integrity of the game and the nature of honesty and law, is using admitted anecdotes to disqualify honest and transparent players who are truly fans of the game and of SCG. Uh, not exactly a very good example of integrity at all by any definition. See, he's going on and on and on about that. If you're accused of doing something, there's no camera evidence and no witnesses, just he said, she said. The best they can do is interview your past players or your past opponents, and if they say, yeah, I thought something fishy was going on, I mean, oh, well. They, they can't say, well, I can't prove it. You know, this isn't uh, beyond the shadow of a doubt like a court of law. It's like, if they all say, yeah, maybe he was doing something to roll a little close to himself, then, then oh, well, you probably shouldn't have done it. Like, without a thousand cameras set up like a damn casino, it's the best they can do. You only have witness testimonies to go on. Now that said, I think that they completely rigged it because you're a white male, because that's what they do allegedly. I, my, one of my best friends that plays Magic, he had this happen. His opponent didn't understand a rule that is clear cut as day, clear as day about how the mechanic works, called over a judge just to be sure, and he's like, yeah, that's cool, that's your right, yeah, of course, that's why they're here, you know, no problem, not gonna be a dick about it. So his opponent was uh, non-white, we'll say, and the judge was a trans person. So, naturally, oh, I don't know. Uh, I, d uh, I don't know how this works. I think your opponent is right. So he goes, well, they're not. Feel free to call the head judge. So they did, and the head judge is like, yes, absolutely. That's how the mechanic works. What the hell? It was like, it was like double strike or trample or something. But take that story and multiply it by 30. That's what I'm hearing goes on at these tournaments. So some of the judges that are angry at certain groups, and that, I mean, let's be, let's call it what it is. They're racist, sexist, hateful assholes. They are bigots. They are discriminating against certain groups, and they need to f right off. Allegedly, according to multiple stories that I've heard, and I've never heard a contradictory story in my entire life. So once again, I don't have proof of this. I just have a lot of stories. So take everything, you know, with a grain of salt. I mean, it's not like we caught them on video, like admitting, hi, I discriminate against people. But I mean, you know, like I said, circumstantial evidence seems to be pointing one way, which coincidentally appears to be how judges make decisions at these tournaments. So if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. So anyway, his argument that them doing the best evidence gathering that they can and making a decision based on that is, is not good enough. Well, yeah, it isn't, but, but it is. I mean, what do you expect them to do? Every cheater would get away with cheating if they couldn't disqualify people based on a couple opponents accounts and somebody's complained. It, it just is what it is. But you know, like I said, also it's because you're white. You would be able to get away with literally anything if you weren't a white male at these tournaments, I assure you. I mean, we've all seen Autumn Burchett blatantly cheat on camera and just nothing, not even a statement from Wizards, the DCI, the judge program, nothing. So he finishes with, uh, would it be nice to get my SDG points for that event? Of course. Would I like to have the prize wall tickets? Indeed I would. But honestly, that is not why I am taking the time out of my day to write this. I've been playing the game since 1998, and it is truly beyond material, beyond competition, and beyond fame for me. This game is a spiritual, nostalgic, and core piece of who I am. For me, cheating would be truly ruining the game. There simply is a fundamental understanding of honesty, especially especially in competitive play in my universe of this game. I am writing this because I believe this behavior will continue. I believe that younger, less jaded players will run into this issue, and if they do, they would be less likely to return to Star City Games or any larger events for that matter. Which, I mean, my opinion is just don't show up in the first place. They're all a shit show, but okay, even the Channel Fireball events are a joke. I've heard some things about their judges, but nowhere near the level of Star City Games. Uh, so he says, and if they do, they would be, oh wait, I think I already read that. Okay. So many state this behavior is entirely taking the fun out of the game. I do my best to encourage them otherwise, but it's hard for a lot of players to deal with judges that don't, or that actually don't understand the meaning of integrity or how to conduct an investigation. Yeah. Honestly, look at how long he's been playing and look at his history of complaints, which is like none. 
I mean, you could ask three people or pretend you did or lie about it or whatever have your opponents, you know, ask rigged questions and then, oh, I just want to kick this person out because I don't like them. You know, guilty until proven innocent bullshit, all this railroading crap that obviously went on in this one. Or you can, you know, run a real investigation. So like I said, they're, they're both a little bit off. I mean, the judge, I think, went way too far, didn't have enough ev evidence, should have just done a game loss or a warning or forced a tire, you know, whatever. Just some minor, minor little slap on the wrist, just shot across the bow, a little warning shot in case he was cheating. Do you think getting that close to, to getting caught that he's ever going to do it again? And then he goes and tells all the rest of the judges, hey, this guy might be rigging dice rolls. If you ever hear anything about that, oh my gosh. That way, if he wasn't cheating, okay, he's still in the tournament, whatever minor little points thing he just wants to play. Screw it. But if he was cheating, okay, like, that's like getting a warning on a speeding ticket. You're probably not going to speed the rest of the week. You know what I mean? Well, at least some people are that smart. Some people like me are smart enough to just not speed in the first place. I just cannot stand people where they, they have to have something like some bad reaction, bad consequences happen once, and then they learn their lesson. It's like people are like, oh, how could you say cocaine is bad if you haven't tried it? Because I'm not an idiot. So from what I heard, that is the policy that a lot of judges go with because they have their notes. They have their, you know, rumors and history of different players and that kind of stuff. And I mean, if you're only going to catch nine out of 10 cheaters, but because you let one get away, you also let like three people get away that didn't do anything. Good. I mean, cheaters are going to cheat and cheat and cheat and cheat and cheat. They have plenty of chances to get caught. But you only need to accuse somebody of cheating once wrongly to ruin their career, their reputation, and make them really pissed off. Which, by the way, is very dangerous. I mean, I, I can't even think of a faster way to piss me off than accusing me of something I didn't do. Uh, nothing comes to mind. Maybe stealing money from me? But yeah, not a good idea. And the judges know it. They don't want to go around, well, we can't prove you didn't do it, so screw you. Like, what? you know, that that's not only very against how the, like, American court system works, but just immoral in general. You can't catch everyone, so just go for the more egregious ones, make an example out of them, you know, popularize it so that you get the chilling effect, and hopefully they and everybody else won't do it again, even though they will, and just keep catching them. It is what it is. For every, oh, he said, she said, I think they did this. I think maybe I saw this. I don't know. There's some guy flipping cards at the top of the deck directly on camera. You want to absolutely run somebody over, pick one of those. So he finishes with, I would love to work with the community to strive at protecting the sanctity of the events and fix issues any way I can. The Magic the Gathering has been a staple of my life and it has been a passion that uh, will never be quelled. I breathe integrity when it comes to this community and look forward to helping in any way I can to prevent this from happening to other players. See, the mistake he made was PWW, playing wall white. You can't do that. You, you can't do that at Star City Games Tournament, not without being gay. You just can't do it. It could literally be like, a third Italian, a third Jewish, and a third Irish. No, no you're white. Screw you. You're, you're going to get the shit end of every single ruling because of your skin color, period. Because, rawr, white people are the worst. Ooh, grr, white males. Seriously, these judges make me sick. They make me absolutely sick that people like this not only exist in society, but that they're put in positions of power, and then they all get together and kind of, like, hire each other for the job. They all, like, come as a package deal to make sure that, you know, nobody slips through the cracks when it comes to them just acting out their discrimination. It is honestly completely disgusting, and at this point, I, I wish I would just get one of the judges to, like flip on them and say yes they all agree to do this we've talked about it or to like you know have a hidden recorder just basically like go undercover and get somebody to say it the class action lawsuit i mean whoever owns star city games like you would own their car like th there wouldn't be a star city games that would be the end of this disgusting racist sexist f***ing organization somebody please sue them this is literally illegal in america there is prize money on the line i don't care if it's volunteer positions that's how they all think they're getting away with this uh in a totally unrelated statement if any star city games judges would like to come on my channel in a live stream or in a video or an interview and talk about anything related to the judge program any stories or any things you might have overheard please contact me on twitter yeah i know it's twitter whatever like what am i gonna do have you add me on skype Audio chat, you, you can just like talk to me, you just gotta call me up. I ain't your homie like that, and you don't know me like that. We go into Twitter DMs, you gotta type some words at me. This guy, I don't give a shit. I think you just add people on Skype based on your email and don't wanna give up my email. You know what? Let's crowdsource the shit out of this. If you have a story about the way you were treated at a Star City Games tournament involving uh, any like protected class, anything, or really just any bad stories about the judges, leave them down below. This should be entertaining. And don't make up shit that never happened. You're not helping the cause. You're just being a jackass.
on a side, I'll look at uh, his opponent's uh, response to this, but the link is broken, but then somebody posted the corrected one, so thanks for that. So, I mean, I don't know if this person necessarily wanted their name dragged into it, and they're kind of like looking like the bad guy, bad, bad woman here. So I'll just call him uh, T2, because get it, because their name both started with T anyway. Uh, T2 says, uh, I wrote about my experience about SCG Richmond this weekend. I recommend reading. Wait, what an odd title. Okay, so <laughs> I really want to put this experience behind me and use the energy I have left on testing for the upcoming GP I will be playing. Uh, I'm very tired and very depressed right now, but I think explaining everything that happened this weekend might be a good thing. So here's my description of events. Okay, I hate to be like this guy, but they already mentioned like depression and then their their uh, the original account was oh, they were getting too emotional, had to leave, like over just the judge getting called. Maybe a highly competitive high stress tournament ain't for you, just saying. You know, a lot of other people have like real shit happen in their life and they keep it together anyway. So she goes on to say round three, which I could have sworn he said it was round six, uh, of the open, my opponent is very soft spoken and I often do not hear him verbalize the changing of phases or the passing of his turn, so I have to pay more attention or more careful attention than normal, so I am aware of everything he is doing. Oh, I can't stand low talkers <laughs> where my Seinfeld fans at. Honestly, don't even know if she's talking about him. Uh, he casts Birth of Melitus, turn two, and passes with the full grip of cards. I ask how many cards he has in his hand, and he says seven. I take his word for it and take my turn. On my opponent's next turn, he casts an Omen of the Sea on his main phase, which gives away that he is likely digging for lands. He scries one card on top and one on bottom. How would she know that? And what does any of this have to do with anything? Anyway, uh, then he draws. I am surprised when he passes without playing a land. Why? You don't know what's in his hand. I don't get how any of this works, but okay, we'll just take a word for it. Uh, because he misses a land drop, he has eight cards in his hand and does not discard. I ask how many cards he has in hand. I already know he has eight. And as a way to signal that he needs a discard, he discards a card after I have pointed this out to him. Because of this, I become a little suspicious of my opponent. On my opponent's next turn, he plays his third land and casts it to fairy. Time Raveler. Well, that's instant disqualification right there. Come on. Uh, later in the turn, he plays another land. I inform him that he has already played his land for turn. Oh, clear as day what he was trying to do. So I don't think she's talking about him at this point, by the way, the, the, the original guy. Um, he puts the land back in his hand, but when he says, wait, no, I was on the play as a way to justify playing the second land, I inform him. I specifically remember he missed a land drop the turn he cast Omen of the Sea. I did not call a judge for this. Oh, you should have. Oh, girl, come on. And I am aware now that this was a major mistake. See, this is why I should read the rest of the sentence. <laughs> Do not be afraid to call a judge on a clear, blatant cheater because you got to get up their ass and make their heart beat, okay? You got to be like, I'm on to you. You got to goose these people. You got to let them know that you know that they know that you know. In the words of the burbs. <laughs> uh, in the past, I have had other opponents make illegal game actions, such as playing an extra land, and I did not call a judge because I wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt. See, that's that's generous, but he made a pattern of it. So I'd, she seems like a pretty straight-up player, pretty reasonable player to me so far. Uh, maybe it was an accident. Uh, even now, I want to give my opponent in this match the benefit of the doubt because it is possible that playing the extra land and not discarding uh, to hand size was just an accident or sloppy play. And, you know, honestly, it could have been, but not the second time. Not the double land drop. The sloppy play was when he forgot to drop it, and now he's making up for it. Clearly. Uh, as this person would later describe it as because uh, the fact that there were two illegal actions on top of how quiet my opponent was throughout the match. In some cases, he simply did not speak while moving phases or taking a game action. That's just weird. Uh, I do believe he was likely cheating intentionally. Oh, yeah. Oh, because, yeah, if you don't change the phases and point it out, yeah, that's how people try to mask it, actually, now that she mentions it. Uh, I can't know for sure, though, because I did not want to be mean and call a judge. See, the people are like, I don't want to make waves. I don't want to accuse my opponent of cheating. Bare minimum, you're wrong, and they just did some shady shit, and they know it, and they're like, well, bad circumstances, cool, warning, whatever. And you might get a DQ out of it. I mean, I'd hate to get a DQ or, like, a round win or whatever, like when they didn't do anything, but maybe they should tighten up their play a little bit. You know, it's still their fault. Just saying. And then if they are cheating now, they know that everybody's on to them and the pressure's on and they ain't going to do it again. Nobody would have the balls to try at the same time in the same round against the same opponent. Never. Except apparently people named Fabrizio, but yeah, call a judge. That's why they're there. I mean, they're, they're there to get rid of all the white males, but other than that, they're, they're normally there in theory, to enforce the rules and to stop cheaters from, you know, cheating and to stop sloppy players from looking like they're cheating. 
If you let it slide, they're going to try the same shit the next round against the next person, potentially. So now you're passing the buck down the line, and now that person's getting negatively affected because you're too scared about being polite. Well, guess what? There's, you know, money and prizes on the line, so let's go. You know what I mean? When you walk in the door, fun and politeness goes out the window and the gloves come off. This is a tournament. So anyway, she goes on to say, back to the match. I lose our game two and we prepare for game three. My opponent and I are deciding the or deciding match for our team. Oh, I hate it when people team up. Uh, we both have our respective teammates on either side of us. I thought they assigned seats. It's like your table number is your ranking of how you're doing. Right? Anyway, uh, on one of the final turns of the game, I draw my card for the turn, making it so I have two cards in hand. One of the cards is land, which I play. I subsequently have one card left over in hand. My opponent looks at the teammate on my left and says she just played an extra land card. No, I didn't, I say calmly. My opponent looks at his teammates and repeats, she just played an extra land. There is some back and forth about this, and my teammates eventually tell him to call a judge if he's so concerned I played an extra land. His face is reddening, and he's about to call a judge when one of his teammates says, she didn't play an extra land. <laughs> oh, right then and there, I would call a judge. You've got five witnesses that can say, this asshole's trying to, like, angle shoot me, trying to accuse me of cheating, and, and, and the game's basically over. Oh, disqualify this asshole. I would have jumped over the table and told him I thought of him. I don't, I don't tolerate that level of bullshit, accusing me of shit I didn't do. Anyway, um... She says, uh, yeah, he lets it go, and we finish the match, and I lose. Oh, see, that if you're going to lose, call a judge, because then you're going to win. <laughs> Just, if you're going to win, then leave it. If you want to leave it, leave it, because it's the same result, whatever. I mean, yeah, a cheater doesn't get punished, but if you really don't want to make waves or piss off a whole team or whatever, get a reputation, okay, I wouldn't. So then she says, I don't really want to shake my opponent's hand because of how uncomfortable the match was, but I do so anyway. Oh, that's classy. This, this is a classy girl right here. Okay, I'm starting to like her. Uh, I walk away with my teammates, and one of them points out the fact that my opponent never addressed me during the exchange about believing I played an extra land. It, yeah, that's true. They just turned to their teammates and said it. That is so just... Did I mention the level of cheating that goes on at Star City Games events versus uh, uh, Channel Fireball? astronomically higher from what I've heard. Just FYI. So if you're getting the impression, wow, is everybody cheating? Yes. Yes, comma, answer, colon, everybody is cheating at these events. Star City Games is the biggest cheating central according to literally everybody. That's why I found it so hilarious when the judge is like, I'm disqualifying you for tainting the reputation of the event or the integrity. Integrity, my ass. You're Star City Games. F*** you. Your owner gets accused of price fixing and inside information abuse like every week. Don't act like you don't know who you are, you and your activist judges. If you haven't found out already, the moral of the story is do not f***ing go to a Star City Games tournament. Oh, I thought this was all a lead up to like, here's why I was in this state of mind. But no, this is literally just addressing another incident. So then she way later says this next section is about another incident that took place Sunday at Standard Classic. This is the one that's actually about the rest of the video. Holy shit. Hey, you know that incident of cheating that happened at Star City Games Tournament? Which one? You'll have to be more specific. Which one of the hundred instances of cheating are you talking about? It's about one to two per person, apparently. Holy shit, your company and your tournaments are a joke. Just close up shop and f*** off. Get out of our community, Star City Games. Anyway, on Sunday, I entered the Standard Classic after the events of the previous day. I go into each match a little afraid of my opponent. So, like I said, it does kind of frame her state of mind. I'm constantly leering of being ta talked down to, cheated against, or just disrespected in some other way. And see, that that getting inside your opponent's head, that's also cheating. And they are doing it on purpose. They're not just dickish people. They, they know what they're doing. They know what effect they're having. And they want to throw you off. So then she says, I have to thicken my skin and just play magic as best as I can. More than anything, though, I just want people to be nice to me so badly. Well, sister, try working customer support or retail or anything involving really large numbers of people, and you will just give up on the entire human race and just assume everybody's a dick, unless they prove otherwise. That, that's probably a better mindset to go into this with. So in the final round of the classic, my opponent and I agree... Oh, it's a final round. Okay, I didn't know that. Uh, they We agree to high roll uh, to decide who goes first. He shakes the dice, puts his hand a few inches above the table, and tilts his palm so the dice fall out. Oh, anybody who does that is getting a judge called on him. 
Okay, if this is true, this was like legitimately his fault and he just didn't know it. But like, how do you not know how to roll dice? Somebody pulls that shit, the little, the little hand basically touching the table flip over where they're practically just slapping down known values and the dice don't even fucking roll. I'm going to tell you, you better re-roll them dice from a higher height or I'm going to shim up your ass. But still, the judges made the decision without any kind of anything. No, no cameras, no real evidence. And even she admits he, she doesn't think he was cheating and probably told the judges that. But she's a female and he's not, so he's wrong, disqualified, done. By the way, in general, to reiterate, round losses and warnings are for stuff you can't really prove but is suspected. Disqualifications are for, okay, we caught you cheating. It's a little more nuanced than that, but I'd say that's a pretty good summary of uh, how judges are supposed to handle things. But, oh, welcome to Star City Games, where things are a little different than that. So she thought it's suspicious that one of the dice landed on a six, you know, a max roll, so even though it was six three. And she says, uh, I'm used to letting things like this go or being too intimidated to tell my opponent why they did something I did not like, which once again, don't be. Um, but I'm braver this time. Yeah, she, she's fed up with people's cheating, their bullshit, and then lying to her to try to angle shoot. And just, Yeah, at this point in the tournament, f*** it. You know, gloves come off, like I said. Especially in the final round, just saying. So like, you know... I get where she's coming from on this like I initially suspected in the first place. So th I think they're, they're both assessment of this is just an unfortunate situation that went really badly and was mishandled by the judges. Yeah. So she claims, um, I tell my opponent I would prefer a reroll and she explained the reasoning. Tilting it out of your hand means you could potentially manipulate the dice to land in a certain way. He is flabbergasted. Now see, he claims that she never told him why she thinks that he was... Uh, he needed to re-roll. He was left in the dark, which she just said that she told him. So that's interesting. He asks, do you really think I'm trying to do that? In other words, acknowledging that he understood what she was accusing him of. Now we're getting differing stories. This is very interesting. And truth be told, I don't think he is. I doubt there's anything fishy going on. I'm sure they are a well-intentioned person, and they just rolled the dice a little too close to the table on pure accident. But, well, yeah, you don't want your dice going flying. That, that you want to talk about rude. Oh, hey, let me go duck under five chairs and get up and walk the whole row of tables and go get my dice because I'm a dumbass that doesn't know how to keep my dice on the table. Guys, just bring your damn dice towers. <laughs> All y'all D&D players, just br bring the dice tower to, to the magic tournament, damn it. Or like a Yahtzee cup. You know what? Drag your entire laptop there, a network connection, go to random.org. Just kidding. But then she says, and this is the key, because these tournaments are such an absolute shit show full of the worst players you'll ever see. Um, but I'm done giving the benefit of the doubt. Unfortunately, the countless other opponents I've had have tried to do something like manipulate dice. Yes, I have had that happen before. No, I didn't feel comfortable enough to call a judge or take advantage of me and my tendency to, quote, give the benefit of the doubt have ruined it for anyone else who is likely innocent. I am done giving anyone the opportunity to take advantage of me, intentional or not, and I do something I would never have done even one day prior. I call a judge and honestly that's how you shouldn't handle all this like yeah they might see it as rude but they they screwed up they're gonna learn from it and they're gonna do things differently they're gonna stop rolling sloppy they're gonna stop taking phases sloppy they're gonna stop whatever they did that made made you call a judge they're gonna stop doing it and if they're a big enough person about it they're gonna realize what what part they had to play in it you know what I mean so she says the floor judge comes over. She explains what happened. I mean, we all know what happened. So, um, you know, she got pretty pissed off about the situation and got kind of heated and, you know, stressful and whatever. So like, yeah, I get it. Not everybody's me where I could literally have 15 people pointing at me saying that I just like lit the person's cards on fire. If I didn't do it, I'm going to stay perfectly calm and tell them I didn't and tell them to prove it. And, and where, where's the ashes? You know what I mean? Like, I'm just one of those cool level headed people. But not everybody's like that, especially after like the absolute shit show that she had on Saturday beforehand. Once again, to reiterate, do not go to these tournaments. Star City Games is a f***ing joke. Everybody's cheating and the judges are crooked. In case you didn't get that already. Do not look for fair treatment. I'd say unless you're you're in a protected, discriminated class, but then you're, you're still not going to get fair treatment. You're just going to get a bunch of freebies. I bet you, and I, I might try this as a sting operation, I'll find like the most, quote, diverse as they define it person and have them just you know accidentally like get up and, and just chuck their opponent's deck in the air and then when, when, the, when that judge comes over they're like what just happened just be like sorry it was an accident they'll probably just give you a warning and then make your opponent go pick up their own cards i'm gonna sneak in with a camera i'm gonna get that on video 
Whereas, you know, if you're a white male and you accidentally uh, cut their deck into three piles instead of two when cutting it, they're going to immediately have a judge come over with sirens blaring, like literally cop car sirens, and they're going to tell you, three piles, isn't that Nazi symbology? You're banned for life. Okay, I'm joking, but the funny thing is they're actually almost that bad from what I heard. Th those judges are just a disgrace to the game and a disgrace to mankind. So yeah, this whole situation sucks, but, um, you know, it's one of those things where it's bad for both people involved, but it's worse because the judges hate white males. That That is that is just what made this worse. So, um, yeah, don't attend these tournaments. Don't buy cards from them. Just just don't. If it, SCG equals just don't. It's like Nike, but, like, just don't do it. So hope you enjoyed this wonderful story. Um, fuck you, Star City Games, and I'll see you guys next video. Guys, next video. Guys, next video.